Right, welcome to this index review for Tower Empire. Uh, it was the first army uh, that I started to collect after I got back, back into 40k. I um, started collecting one 40,000 when I was about 14, then had a break on it for quite a while, uh, went into historical wargaming, uh, and then in my early 20s came back into 140,000. And it was after seeing the Tower in uh, an issue of White Dwarf, a uh, new faction then, I hadn't seen them before, and then so started uh, to collect them. Uh, eighth edition's here now, so I had a I had a pretty good tower list. It didn't always do very well. It wasn't the top army. Um, Commander Pinpoint struggled at times. Uh, it's been humiliated. But now of eighth edition, uh, there's a chance to reorganize the force uh, and then try and create something that's pretty good. But in this video here, uh, we're going to take a look at the Tower Empire Index. Uh, in this Index Xenos 2 uh, book here. Now I'm going to run through all of the units because um, I'm open to any uh, changes here for the tower but you can uh, have a look here at the units as well uh, see uh, what units look pretty good and which ones aren't so good. I'm sure we're going to find that some units now have improved for the tower and others that are really good maybe not quite as good as they were. So uh, just to mention I've got mine uh, the book here from uh, gamingfigures.com they do Games Workshop at a discounted rate, uh, so you can uh, get your Warhammer 40,000 stuff uh, at a discounted price. And they do have a gaming system as well, Age of Sigmar, and then things like Flames of War, uh, Bolt Action, that kind of thing, also at disca uh, discounted rates. So, uh, what we'll do is get straight into this here. So they come just after the Orcs, which we've already gone through. You like the tower and happy with the color scheme that I have as well. I just finished painting my breeches. Uh, two units of ten of them are finished. I probably will be featuring them in the new army. I wonder how good they are uh, in the new index book here. So uh, in seventh edition, tower quite complicated. The multiple detachments and formations. It got a bit tricky after one. There's loads of rules. It ended up forgetting. Uh, and just the organisation was a bit of a nightmare. Um, and I was trying to get the Ephero into the force and just the structure of the 7th edition codex just really struggled with that. I had to come up with quite a complicated setup. So hopefully it's been streamlined here. I think it has. You can look at the detachments. Uh, it's very, very flexible now for 8th edition. So you should be able to pretty much put together any force that you want. So just some uh, universal rules here for them. So, for the greater good, which is most of the tower units, when an enemy unit declares a charge, a unit with this ability that is within six of one of the charging unit's targets may fire overwatch as if they were also targeted. A unit that does so cannot fire overwatch again in this turn. So you can't do it multiple times, but it's helpful. And now, just think of 8th edition, with blast markers and flame and templates gone, that you can bunch your army together very, very tight indeed. Obviously, you've got to maintain your one inch, over one inch distance between units and characters, uh, but you can still pack units tight together. So, unit fire warriors, 12 of them, you might stretch them right out to avoid templates, but now you can base to base, put them together in solid blocks. And that means that the tighter they are, the more units protecting each other, the better your overwatch will be uh, when charged. Uh, then there's marker lights here. I, I think they've taken a knock here. They're not as good as they used to be. So, if a model, other than a vehicle, fires a marker light, it cannot fire any other weapons at phase. When a unit is hit by a marker light, place a counter next to it for the remainder of the phase. The table below describes the benefits Tower Empire models have when shooting a unit that has marker light counters. All benefits are cumulative. Right, so. Um, it looks like you don't use up the counters, you just place the counter on it and it just stays with that unit for that phase, that target unit, and then anyone that fires at them gains the uh, above rules here on the chart. If it says cu uh, the, if the benefits are cumulative, then say if you've got three marker light hits on uh, a target, then you'll get the benefits of uh, one, two, and three. I believe that's how it works. So, correct me if I'm wrong. So, if you get one marker light hit, you may reroll hit rolls of one for Tower Empire units attacking this unit. It's a small benefit, but it's alright, just for one marker light hit. Uh, two, destroy and seek a missile fired at this unit to use this firer's firing model's ballistic skill 
and any modifiers rather than hitting on a six. So if you're taking a storm surge, then really you do need to have my acolytes in your army. Yeah, you need to get at least two hits. Now what's interesting here then is if they say you've got a storm surge, if it remains stationary it gets plus one to hit, so it'll be on freeze to hit. And then if you're firing that uh, seeker or, or destroyer missile, uh, then you'll also get the benefit of rerolling once. So the two stacked together, I believe, so that's pretty good. Uh, if you get three marker light hits, Tau Empire models take this unit, do not suffer the penalty for moving and firing heavy weapons or advancing and firing assault weapons. Okay. So a further, it's almost like a plus one to if, you've, if you're on the move. Uh, and then for the target unit does not gain any bonus to its saving throws of being cover. That's quite minor really because covers you get only plus one to your armor save. So I wouldn't say that was a major one. And then five or more, add one to hit rolls for Tone Pie models taking this unit. And you get that stacked on top of that. So it's an interesting way of doing it. No, it's an interesting way of doing it. But I would, I may, may try and build an army not overly dependent on Mark Lights. I have a few in the army for sure because I hope to take a storm surge, but uh, I'm not doing it. I'm going to major on marker lights, make them as important as they were. Um, so, as your war gear listed there, which will cover as we look at the equipment for these different units. So, we're going to go on to HQs first. So, we're just going to take them in the order that they come in the book. So, the first one is a commander, so a unit that you can customize quite heavily. So, we have to turn to the back here to get our points values. Tower Empire. Commander. He's 76 points without any upgrades. Now, might spend a little while on here because I might cover the support systems uh, and the ranged weapons as well, but once they're all covered, we'll see how they can be applied for all the others. It'll be quicker, but this one here. Uh, he's moving eight. Now, I've been looking through this. I there's not really jetpack moves anymore, I don't think. It's just move and advance, I believe. So they've cut down on flexibility a bit. The, move, the move's increased a little bit though, eight inches instead of six. So you can move a bit further. You can advance. Uh, and if he's armed with assault weapons, then he can fire at minus one. Uh, but weapon skill three plus, which is not bad in combat. Uh, ballistic skill of two plus, which is excellent. So I reckon it's well worth arming him with some pretty nasty weaponry. Uh, strength 5, Toughness 5, 6 wounds, so nice durability, 4 attacks, leadership 9, and then a save here of 3+. plus. So Commander's that's a good stat line there for 76 points. Um, so we'll cover these two. Uh, a Burst Cannon is range 18, it's Assault 4, Strength 5, AP minus nothing, and damage 1. It's a pretty poor weapon, I don't think is very good. Uh, and then See, like, a burst cannon's really cut down now. For example, you're firing at unit space frames in cover. They've got two up armor save. There's no minus on that, so that's not so good. The range isn't amazing. Uh, and then also, you could, maybe back in seventh, you could land behind a vehicle. Strength five could glance or penetrate rear armor. But now, it's hardly gonna scratch a vehicle, so not so good. Missile pod is better. Uh, range 36, assault two. Strength 7, AP minus 1, which isn't that amazing. And then uh, D3 points of damage there if you get any hits come through, so that's a pretty good weapon. Uh, this model may replace its burst cannon missile pod with two weapons from the ranged weapons and or support systems list. This model may also take two additional items from the ranged weapons and or support systems list. So, can he take four weapons in total? and be able to fire all of them. It's interesting. If um, if you are into town you're using them in 8.4 already, then in the comments section, if you have a really good commander uh, combination of uh, upgrades and uh, support systems and weapons, then leave that there and share your ideal uh, tower commander uh, loadout. Be interesting to read through those just there. Uh, so that's that. We'll cover those in just a moment. Just some extra rules here. So he does have for the greater good. Master of War. 
Monks for battle at the beginning of your turn, a single friendly commander can declare either a Kayon or a Monk Ta. Monk Ka. Uh, a Kayon. Until the end of the turn, you can reroll failed hit rolls for friendly units within six. These units cannot move for any reason. So reroll hits, that's pretty cool. So to bury them in amongst a unit, or amongst multiple units, or to have them turn up with your crisis team to support them, you can declare that and it's rerolls to hit. That's pretty cool. Uh, a Monte Car, friendly uh, tower units within six can both advance and shoot as if they hadn't moved this turn. There's a bit of speed there if you need to. Interesting. Manta Strike. During deployment, you can set up a commander in a Manta hold instead of placing them on the battlefield. At the end of your movement phases, at the end of any of your movement phases, they can use a Manta Strike to enter the fray. Set them up anywhere on the battlefield that's more than nine inches away from enemy models. So, the amb uh, ambush potential there for him as well. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's interesting. It's difficult choices to make here with how to configure the tower commander. You could go defensively, bury him in your defensive block, give him some nice long range weapons to shoot out with, like uh, missile pods, give him three missile pods for example. You know, that would be six shots in twos to hit. Not bad. Uh, or you could go aggressive, put him with some crisis battle suits, uh, deep strike down, give him some fusion blasters. Uh, to strike that way. Not so sure uh, how to configure this one, but uh, the commander's pretty flexible. So we'll just cover the ranged weapons then. Here. So if we go back to here, and we go to here, I have to flick backwards and forwards a bit to get these stats. So the first option is the air bursting fragmentation projector. Uh, let's just get the costs here for burst cannons. Is 10 points and then I believe it's quite expensive the missile pods 24 points ouch yeah he's expensive okay uh, then the air bursting fragmentation projector is 10 points so quite cheap uh, it's range 18 again assault d6 so could be good could be poor strength 4 AP enough damage 1 this can target units not visible not really useful very often, so don't really rate that one. It's 10 points for a weapon, that's not that amazing. Next one's a burst cannon. Cyclic Iron Blaster, which is uh, one that I used before. It's 18 points. It's quite reasonable. Here it is. When attacking with this weapon, you choose one of the profiles below. So the first is range 18 again. Standard is Assault 3. Uh, strength 7, AP minus 1, 1 point of damage is quite poor. And then overcharge is range 18, assault D3. So you could roll a 1 there, um, or roll a 1 or a 2, and you only get one shot. Strength 8, still only a minus 1, D3 points of damage. And if you make one or more hit rolls of 1, the bearer suffers a mortal wound. Don't really rate that either. Nope. Not particularly good. Okay. Still on the hunt here for good missile. The, the best is the missile pods so far. Flamer. Costs 9 points. And that's range 8. Assault D6. Strength 4. No AP. Uh, 1 point of damage. Auto hits. Pretty tame. The town need weaponry that blows stuff away. Fusion Blaster. Costs. Uh, here it is, uh, 21 points. 21 points. Hmm. Okay. And it's not bad, but it's cheaper than a missile pod. Range 18. Assault 1, strength 8, AP minus 4, that's more like it, and D6 points of damage. If you get to within 9 inches, you're all 2D6, choose the best for your damage. Fusion Blaster is nasty, it's always been nasty, and it still is nasty. Um, and then here, you know, 1d6 damage isn't that amazing, but if you start getting 2d6 damage, 3d6 damage, 4d6 damage, 
from firing multiple weapons and all of a sudden you're, you're popping vehicles in one round of shooting which is what the town need to do so I think fusion blaster seems to be the best option here uh, the other options are missile pod which we've covered and then the plasma rifle which is one of my favourites in 7th it's only 11 points so it has dropped right down it's almost half the cost uh, of a fusion blaster Plus a rifle, range 30, rapid fire 1, so you get to him 15 inches, get another shot. Oh, sorry, that's pulse rifle. Uh, we are looking for plasma rifle. Here it is, range 24, that's how it used to be. Rapid fire 1, so you get him in half range, you get another shot. Strength 6, AP minus 3, 1 point damage. Aye, only 1 point of damage now. They should have been. They should have made it a bit more expensive and made two points of damage. That's a shame. That one point of damage is pretty tame. It is pretty tame. There's no get hot or anything like that, but that's pretty tame. Their one point of damage. So you're not. It's not really a viable option for taking on vehicles. You need to saturate the opponent with loads and loads of plasma rifle hits to do that. It's pretty nice against space marines. But even a space marine is still going to get a six up save from that. So the plasma rifle's take a knock here, I reckon. We'll take a fusion blaster over that. For sure. So out of all those weapons, uh, the fusion blaster, I think, is the best. So support systems. So there's the cost of them, and then the rules for them are down here. Some of these, I've looked through these already, and some of them are really cool. So the first one is advanced targeting system here. A model equipped with an advanced targeting system increases its AP characteristic of all its weapons by one. So for example, AP0 becomes AP-1 and AP-1 becomes AP-2. That's a brilliant upgrade to take. For example, you've got three missile pods on your commander, if you're allowed to do that. Take that and then they will become AP-2. Really helpful. Uh, fusion blasters become AP-5. So land raiders won't get a save at all. Yeah, that's pretty nasty, actually. And that will cost eight points, which it seems like a lot of the elite units now, for all the indexes um, and factions, are expensive. The, a lot of these upgrades here are very cheap. I think they're worth taking. You've already paid out the points for something decent. And a small amount of points just to enhance it even more, I think, is worth it. But advanced targeting system is brilliant. Um, and I mean, you could give it to a storm surge, maybe. Uh, next one is counter fire defense system. It costs you five points. Model quit of a counter fire defense system re rolls found hit rolls when firing Overwatch. That's okay. Usually you're going to need sixes, so re roll and trying to get sixes. Might be worth it. Might be worth it if you've got tons of weapons. Yeah. I'll probably be more inclined just to rely on the. Uh, for the greater good rule and, and the protection of other units. But you can take that option if you want to. Uh, drone controller costs five points. Friendly drone units have been six. So that's any drones have been six. Uh, equipped for drone co controller, add one to their hit rolls. It makes all the drones much better. It's a pretty good upgrade in the bargain there at five points as well. Uh, early warning override. That's your overwatch or your intercept. It's eight points, still cheap enough. If an enemy unit is set up within 12 of a model, equipped with an early warning override as a result of an ability that allows them to arrive mid table or mid battle, i.e., teleporting, the model may immediately shoot at that unit as if it was your shooting phase. So, a bit of an anti ambush technology there, quite helpful. I suppose you can give that to a storm surge for eight points. And it says that there's no, you just shoot as if it's your shooting phase. So I suppose there's no restriction, you shoot again in your following shooting phase. Yeah. It's like an Overwatch ability, but you're not being charged. Next is a multi tracker. These are all really good upgrades. So it costs you two points for like a battle suit, but for ghost kills and storm surges, it costs ten points. Model equipped with multi tracker and career roll, hit rolls of one. 
if it is firing all of its weapons at the same target. That's really helpful. That's helpful. Um, you know, Markalites I don't think help the tower ballistic skill as much as they used to. They used to be able to use one Markalite hit at a time to push up the ballistic skill. Can't do that anymore. Uh, so anything that buffs the to hit rolls is helpful. Rerolling ones is is pretty it, it's okay, but it's so cheap to do it. You know, crisis battle suits two points a time to get your reroll ones. You know, you get the dreaded ones. You actually get a chance to reroll them. So that's really good. Next is the shield generator. It's just a four up invon save. Riptide, Riptide can't take it. That is helpful. Uh, eight points on a regular unit, 40 points on the ghost kill storm surge. It may well be worth it though on the storm surge, just to negate half of the hits coming through against that thing. Probably well worth taking that, even at 40 points. Four up in one is good. Uh, you know, because unless it's negating them, mortal wounds, it means that half of the hits that come through are just going to ignore them. Well, not ignore them, but save them. Uh, stimulant injector. Roll a dice each time a model with a stimulant injector suffers a wound or a, mo or a mortal wound. On a roll of six, you ignore it. Stimulant injector is five points. For regular units, could put that on your commander. And then if it's four. Nope, it's not for ghost kills, riptides, or storm surges. Can't take them, can't see it here. Nope, okay, interesting. So, even more reason to take the um, shield generator. Target lock. A model with target lock does not suffer the penalty for moving and firing heavy weapons. That's helpful, things like um, the uh, broadsides. Or for or for advancing and firing assault weapons. The model can also advance and fire rapid fire weapons, but must subtract one from its hit rolls. Right, so nice bit of flexibility there. So that is your jetpack move help for the uh, the battle suits. The target lock helps them do that. Moving eight, advance. Then with this, most of the advance, the uh, assault weapons. And heavy can fire at normal with no penalty. And even rapid fire weapons can fire from minus one. Now that cost, let's hope it's cheap. Six points a time. Hmm. Okay. And then the last one here is velocity tracker. Add one to hit rolls for this unit when it shoots a unit that can fly. So I believe the way that works is uh, you have to take minus one off. If, if it's a supersonic or hard to hit, if it's hard to hit roll, minus one, then you add one back on again. Um, but other units. No, oh, no, no, but the other units that can fly. Interesting, because things like skimmers, jet bikes, I believe you're just going to be, you're going to be on plus one to hit them. With no minus, because they're not hard to hit models. So Velocity Tracker is actually pretty good. You're going to come up against a lot of units that have the flyability. Yep. Two points a time. Very cheap. And then a Velocity Tracker here for the Ghost Kill, Riptide and Storm Surge is 10 points. So loads of upgrades there. A lot of them are very cheap indeed, which is really cool. So it's not going to cost you too much uh, to take those upgrades. All right, so... That's the commander. I spent a bit of time there, but we covered loads of the tower weaponry, um, so we know all about that and all the upgrades there. And it's worth bearing those in mind as you look at each of these other units here. So, like the commander. So, here is the option to take a commander in the Cold Star battle suit. His movement becomes 20 inches instead of 8. Uh, his same stat line. Yep. Oh, and just to mention here for Commander, it may be accompanied by up to two tactical drones. Um, we will... Yeah, no, we'll... We'll have a look here, tactical drones. So, we'll have a look here for tactical drones. Because I think they are an entry here. Yeah. 
Yes, it's not every type of drone. It's you can choose from these. So you've got the uh, the gun drone, movement eight. So you better keep up with him. Uh, weapon skill five plus, ballistic skill five plus, strength three, toughness four, wounds one, one attack, leadership six, and a four up save. Nothing different there really. Um, so you've got. We've seen marker light -like rules, and then it's just heavy one. Okay. We'll see if there's a minus for that. I don't think there is. Uh, if you move, and then uh, the pulse car carbine uh, there for the gun drone is range 18, assault two. No twin link though, so they're not as good as they were. Strength five. No, no minus on the AP. Damage one's pretty poor. Uh, just there. The other one's a shield drone, and the shield drone gives you a four plus in one save. Okay. So for the greater good, so you get the Overwatch ability with them. Drone support, tactical drones. Uh, often accompany other Town Empire units. In such instances, a unit's data sheet will instruct you if and how many tactical drones. In which case, it's two for the commander. Tactical drones included in your army in this way have the battlefield role of the unit they accompany. So HQ, uh, for example, when a unit is set up, any accompanying drones must be placed in unit coherency with it. From that point onwards, the accompanying drones are treated as a separate unit. Which means they can, they have to stay an inch away, they can hang around with him or just head off somewhere else. And it also means that if you target him, uh, you, you're shooting at him, there's a safety protocol things here, or if you, you can target the drone specifically, and the commander can't really stop that, I think that's how it works. Then you've got safety protocols, if a drone's unit is within three inches of a friendly tower, infantry or battlesuit unit, you can choose to allocate any wounds to the drones instead of the target unit. So that's how it works. Drones in three inches of it of any of the units. Um, you can call upon uh, save your protocols. There's no role for it. They're just just straight allocation. So I'm thinking uh, the shield drone is pretty cool. Uh, you get your regular hits coming through, you've got pretty good armor, three plus, two plus. You roll on there, your wounds absorbing it, that kind of thing. And then when a nasty hit comes through, a last cannon round comes through, then you say, all right, save your protocols, and you call in one of your shield drones to take the hit. And with the invent save, there's half a chance that the drone will survive. Uh, threat identification protocols. In the shooting phase, gun drones can only target the nearest visible enemy unit. If the two units are equally close, you may choose which is targeted. Oh, this is quite poor. Forcing you to, yeah. So I think the shield drone is the better option. There's the invun. Stable platform, marker drones do not suffer the penalty for moving and firing heavy weapons. So marker drones force to fire at the closest unit. Hmm. They have flyability, by the way, as do the jetpack uh, fly yet commander here. So just handy enough to have, he gets locked in combat, he can pull out. Now I've just read something interesting here. Save your protocols. A drone's unit within three inches of a friendly tower, infantry or battlesuit unit. You can choose to allocate any wounds. Right, so even in close combat, I believe, this can help. You Say your commander's charged. There's a unit of four shield drones within three inches and a load of nasty hits come through from power claws or power fists you can call upon save your protocols here and have the shield drone step in and take the hits take the wounds that is potentially a brilliant way to protect uh, your commander or any of the infantry or battlesuit units so that is pretty cool just thinking of tactical here of what you can do so tower, the flexibility for tower is still definitely there there's some pretty cool rules for them actually i'm starting to like Tau in 8th edition. Okay, so we've covered that. So cult, back to the Cold Star here. Um, there's a couple of different weapons you can take here. So he can take a higher output burst cannon. It's Assault 8. Remember he's at 2's to hit. Range 18. Strength 5. There's still no minus AP. Uh, and it's damage 1. So I just don't think that's going to be much of a threat now in 8th edition. Um, 
high outburst. 20 points. Okay. Then he has, uh, he can take two items from the support systems. He can take two tactical drones. He has the Master of War special rule, Cold Star. When its model advances, add 20 to its move characteristic for that movement phase instead of rolling a d6. So it's very, very quick. It goes 20 and then 20. Fast enough. Uh, and if he advances, that means he's going to be able to still fire his uh, assault weapons. So he's super ambush here. He's pretty amazing. Cold Star Battle Suit is uh, pretty good. The only problem here. Oh no. Cold Star Battle Suit, single one equipped for high outburst cannon and missile pod. You can't take any other weapons. Oh, oh no. Oh, that's terrible. He's 90 points and you have to pay for your upgrades. But he's set there, you can't take, you know, you could, what an ambush unit if you could give him two or three fusion blasters, but you can't. You can just take two support systems. Okay, uh, and then he's got the man strike ability as well if he needs that, but uh, no, it's a bit put off there by the cold start. Brilliant stat line of movement, but then he's restricted, I believe, for weaponry, which is a real shame. Okay, so next is the affair, it's power rating two, so he looks pretty cheap. So we'll look, it's 45 points, so yeah, he's cheap for sure. I think he was 50 points in 7th, so he's dropped, I believe here. So, Ethereal, 6 inch move, 3 up weapon skill, 4 up ballistic skill, strength and toughness 3, 4 wounds now, 3 attacks, legion 9, 5 plus 7. Not really interested in that, it's more the, the benefits that he grants. Does he, but does he still grant decent benefits? Uh, it can be accompanied by tactical drones as well, two of them. Let's just get a costing here on these. So the gun drone's eight points, the shield drone is eight points. Fantastic. Very, I mean, you used to pay out 12 points for these, seven, so they dropped right down. The marker drone is 10 points. Okay. So the model may replace its honor blade with equalizers. So on a blade is plus two strength, and that's all you get. Uh, equalizes strength for the user, which is strength three, but it's AP minus one, you get an extra attack. Uh, on a blade is zero, so you get it for free. Equalizes is a point if you want to go for that. So probably just keep him at the flat. 45 points. Uh, he can take a hover drone, increasing his movement to eight, giving it jetpack and fly keywords. Okay. It's funny how it says gives them the jetpack. I, I can't see what benefits you get for being jetpack. So, unless you know of a rule somewhere that where you get a bit of extra movement or something, but I can't see it anyway. So, uh, but it just increases movement there. Probably probably wouldn't bother. It's usually, I, I put him in with my defensive block, so he sort of sits quite still. Uh, failure is not an option then. Uh, friendly Tau Empire units have been six. So, you know, one model's within six, the rest spread out along, so you can play it that way. It's not 12 anymore, so it's quite tight. But then, in 8th edition, you can go tighter because the blast markers and so on are gone. Um, they may use the Ethereal's leadership characteristic instead of their own for taking morale tests. He's leadership nine. Um, you're going to be looking at leadership quite low, probably. Breaches leadership six or seven, so pretty helpful, actually. For bolstering the line for the price that he is it's very hard to target him uh, because uh, he's a character so you, you hear, he, he'll need to be the closest model he's usually going to be buried right at the back so i think he's helpful here invocation of the elements your movement phase in a feral may invoke one of the elemental powers below all friendly tower empire infantry and battle suit units have been six of any feral invoking an elemental power gain this perhaps benefit to the start of the next turn right so keyword battle suit. I just want to check something here. I don't think it has it. You probably know what I'm going to check. It is the storm surge. It is not a battle suit. It's a vehicle, Titanic, and K2. 
cave you want to in Storm Surge. So the Storm Surge is not going to get the benefit of these. Uh, but broadsides will, infantry units and so on. Calm of Tides, subtract one from any morale tests made for affected units, so you just can just, if you're expecting casualties, it's not that amazing. Storm of Fire, you may reroll to hit rolls of one. In the shooting phase, for affected units that remain stationary in the movement phase. If you stay still, uh, you reroll once. Sense of Stone. Whenever an affected unit suffers an unsaved wound, roll d6. On a 6, that wound is ignored. Brilliant. He'll easily pay for himself in points if he survives a few turns. And then Zephyr's Grace. You can reroll the dice for affected units when they advance, which isn't that amazing, I don't think. Could be helpful if you're trying to. Um, you want to get a good advance roll. You rolled 1, it's terrible. You've got a chance to reroll it, but. Probably quite rarely going to choose that elemental power, but Storm of Fire's okay, and uh, Sense of Stone's really cool, just helping reduce damage also. Alright, so uh, next one's a Cadre Fireblade. Power level 2, looks pretty cheap. Uh, 39 points. God, he's even cheaper than a Ferial. Extremely cheap here. So, uh, Movement 6, weapon skill 3+, plus, ballistic skill 2+, plus, strength of is 3, 5 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 8 and 4 up save. Fire blades, single model, armed with a marker light, pulse rifle and photon grenades. So, photon grenades is 0, pulse rifle is 0, and the marker light is 3 points, it used to be 10. So it makes him 42 points, very very cheap HQ. The cool thing about him is with his marker light, it's going to be hitting on twos, um, usually, so that's really cool. Okay, um, pulse rifle, okay, the greater good. And then volley fire, models, uh, model units, models in units within six. Right. This is worded slightly differently. Yep. So you look at the commander here, Monk, Montcar. Friendly units within six. Here it says models in units within six. So, you know, you can't do the thing where you plant one model and then he. Uh, he have, his bonus goes on to all the models if they stretch. That you've got to keep them all within six. It's only the models within six are going to get it. So it's uh, model units within six of any friendly uh, cadre fire blades may fire an extra shot with pulse pistols, pulse carbines, pulse rifles when shooting at a target that is within half the weapon's range. So it's pretty good. Lot of it. He could easily pay for himself quite quickly there. Quite helpful with the marker light. Nice character to add in, and then um, helping you if your opponent gets too close. Now it only works for pulse pistols, pulse carbines, pulse rifles. So not the uh, breacher pulse blasters, which is a shame. So five blades okay, might be an option. Not that amazing, but he's, if, you, if you need a cheap HQ, you know maybe you're building out a battalion brigade, uh, then you can fill that slot quite quickly, quite easily with that 42 point unit. Okay, so far sight next. Don't really go for far sight enclaves, but the model's really nice. He is... Commander. Probably down here. Yep, 151 points. Includes ball gear, but not drones. 151 points. Quite expensive, movement 8, weapon skill, ballistic skill 2+, plus. strength for is 5, 6 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 9, 3 up save. He's equipped with a plasma rifle and dawn blade, these are already paid for, only one of this model per army. So the plasma rifle, we've seen that, I don't think that's quite poor now. Uh, the dawn, it's okay if you want to kill marines and stuff, um, but you've lost the ability to damage vehicles. And you fire a monstrous creature, you can cause a wound, or two, you know, and the creature's got 10 wounds. So, plasma rifles are taking a knock there. Uh, then the Dawn Blade is strength for the user, so strength 5. AP minus 4 though, that's not very, very nasty, and then D3 points of damage. Uh, he gets 
Archer of War, as usual for Commander. The genius of Montcar once per battle, Commander Farsight can declare Montcar even if Kion or Montcar have already been declared. Uh, Montcar and Kion cannot be declared in the same turn, or I guess the reuse of that. Way of the Short Blade. If we roll to hit rolls of one, for friendly Farsight Enclave units within six of Commander Farsight in the fight phase, or any phase, if the target is an Orc unit. Shield Generator, Commander Farsight has a 4 plus inbun, and then Mentor Strike available for him as well. He's alright. Uh, Shadow Sun next, do have the model for this. Shadow Sun is 167, even more expensive, pretty expensive here. Uh, movement 8, weapon skill 3 plus ballistic skill 2 plus strength and toughness 4, 5 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 9 and 3 up save. She's a single model equipped with 2 fusion blasters. She's accompanied by up to 3 command drones, 1 MV62 command link, up to 2 MV52 shield drones. Only one unit per army. Okay, so let's see if this does not include drones. You have to pay for a drones. <gasps> Super expensive. Very, very expensive. Right, the MV... The MV-52 shield drone. You have to pay an extra 11 points. So an extra 22 points if I take two of them. And then the MV-62 command link. Six points. Quite cheap. But you're pushing on for... Um, if you load out all the drones, Pushing on for 200 points here. Oh, very, very expensive. See what the abilities are. And we'll see what the drones do as well. Yeah, we'll have to. Ah, oh, there's a command link. There's a short drone. Okay. So, uh, Master of War. Okay, we've got the cover genius of Kion, so you get to use that again. Um, camouflage fields. Your opponent must attract one to hit rolls. That to target Commander Shadow Sun or her command drones. So that's the stealth technology kicking in. Infiltrator. During deployment, Commander Shadow Sun can set up anywhere on the battlefield. It's not within not within your opponent's deployment zone and is more than 12 inches away from enemy unit. Uh, then stealth battle suit. It's a 5 plus invan as well on top of that. Okay. Defender of the Greater Good. Or a D6 each time Shadow Sun loses a wound while she's in 3 inches of a friendly. Uh, XV25 stealth battlesuit. All of a 2 plus, a model from that unit can intercept that hit. Shadow Sun does not lose a wound, but the unit suffers a mortal wound. Okay, so she's handy to hang around with for them for, uh, with them for sure. Drone support. When Commander Sh Shadow Sun is set up on the battlefield, her drones are set up, then they act separately, it's fine. Save your protocols. The shield drone gives a 3 plus in one save, so that's pretty good. And then the command link drone. If a friendly commander, if a friendly command link drone, is within 3 inches of Commander Shadow Sun at the start of any of your shooting phases. Nominate a single Tau Empire unit within 12. You can reroll hit rolls of 1 for that unit to the end of the phase. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Probably wouldn't bother with a Command Link drone. Probably. Yeah, well, it's only 6 points. I'll take it if I had spare points, maybe. Okay, so Shadow Sun's okay. Ideally, if you're going for a stealthy sort of I mean, a nice themed army would be Shadow Sun with a load of stealth uh, battlesuit teams and a load of ghost kills. Quite cool. Right, next one is uh, Un Shi. 68 points. Uh, it's uh, armed with non blade, only one per army. Movement 6, weapon skill 2, plus, ballistic skill 4. Plus. Strength of 3, 5 wounds, 5 attacks, leadership 9, and save nothing. You get failure is not an option, so it's an affair with, with blade. It does have a 4 plus invun save. So you get quite a few bonuses here, but you're paying for it, 68 points here. Um, and the honor blade's not that amazing, really. Uh, blade Master. Ah, at the beginning of each fight phase, choose one of the following effects. Uh, close combat attacks are AP minus 2, and they reroll failed invun saves. On a sheet, okay. Shouldn't even be in that situation. You know, Tau, trying to give him a bit of uh, close com but com combat ability, but still not that very good. Invocation of the elements, the same as the uh, Ethereum. Uh, next is Anvar. Uh, 
<laughs> the uh, Emperor Guard at five points each, and then 65 points for Anvar. Uh, weapon skill six plus, dear me, uh, four plus ballistic skill, strength two, toughness three, six wounds, initiative, or attacks one, leadership nine, five up, save. And then uh, the Ethereal Guard, three up, weapon skill, ballistic skill. Strength up is free, two wounds each, three attacks. It contains, as you see here, uh, and Var, and then the two Ethereal Guards. They're armed with Honor Blades, and only one unit per eye. Failure is an option. Paradox of Duality. When this unit is attacked during the shooting phase, it may add rather than subtract the AP of the attack of its save. Uh, to attack to its save characteristics, if it's AP minus three, you get plus three to your arm, so it's kind of weird. Supreme loyalty. Uh, whilst this unit's on the battlefield, you may reroll for morale tests. Reroll morale tests for friendly town empire units. And then invocation of the elements. Yep, so it's like, well, probably won't bother. I think just the standard of feral works just fine. Next one is Dark Striders, the little yeah, HQ you can take for your Pathfinder teams. He's 45 points, this is cheap. Movement 7, 3 up save, 2 up ballistic skill. Uh, usual stat line, but 5 wounds, 3 attacks, 5 up save. Sound of Markalite. Yeah, included in the war gear here. Uh, pulse carbine photon grenades, only one per army. For the greater good, Vanguard. Start of the, the first battle round. Before the first turn begins, you can move Dark Strider up to 7 inches. He cannot end his move within 9 inches of enemy models. If both players have units that can do this, the player who is taking the first turn moves their units first. Structural Analyzer. In your shooting phase, choose a friendly Tau Sept infantry unit within 6 of an enemy unit visible to Dark Strider. The enemy target's toughness is considered to be one point lower when that Tau infantry unit targets them in the shooting phase. Well, with a shooting attack, this ability cannot be used when firing Overwatch. And then fighting retreat, Tau Sept infantry units within 6 of Dark Stride in the shooting phase may attack with ranged weapons even if they fell back. Okay, he actually can pull out a combat. Might be helpful now. I don't know, there's all the rules that you could forget there for Dark Strider. I don't think I would bother. Uh, yes. So, we're on to troops now. So, uh, Fire Warriors. Yeah, um, just down here at strike team. Uh, eight points each. So they, were, they were nine, I believe, so they've come down in price, which is really good. Fire Warriors, just the usual here, four plus ballistic skill. There's nothing really to cover. Four up still gets his four up save. Uh, the Pulse Rifle now is range 30, which is the same rapid fire one. Strength five, there's no minus on the AP. Uh, but it's still strength five is pretty good. The rapid fire ability is still there, so generally pretty good. Check the rules for photon grenades. They do come with those as standard. It's range twelve to throw that, which is pretty far actually. A good throw on them. The <laughs> grenade D six, so six shots. This weapon does not inflict any damage. Your opponent must subtract one for any hit rolls made for infantry units that have suffered any hits from photon grenades till the end of the turn. Okay. It's helpful. Any to hit rolls. That's even shooting. You've got to protect yourself from shooting. Have... Because um, you can throw grenades, you, know, you can split fire now, so one of the models can chuck the grenade. Uh, or two, however many you want to, to get that hit coming in. Okay. So that's interesting. Um, okay, or you could throw them. One you could throw them, uh, or and then charge in combat, and you've got a bit more of a chance. At minus one, yeah, it's helpful enough. Okay, uh, 
so that's that so the unit can be accompanied by up to two by two tactical drones or one tactical drone and an MV36 Guardian drone okay I'm just seeing where to find the rules here for the Guardian drone I'll just check out the, it's 8 points there for the uh, points cost Oh, it's in here. That's okay. Okay, so it's eight points if you want to take that. So you got to twelve of them. The chassis you can get for free. He just comes with an extra attack, and no extra wound, just the extra attack for him. Each fire warrior is armed with pulse rifle photon grenades. Yep. Okay. So. Any fire warrior or fire warrior chassis may replace their pulse rifle with a pulse carbine. Uh, the fire warrior chassis may take a marker light and or a pulse pistol. So that's your marker light just there, which costs three points, very cheap. Bury some marker lights. Or the leader, the chassis may take a mark light. Um, so you can have multiple units of them, put a mark light in each unit. It's quite hard for the opponent to eliminate all of the mark lights. So that's one tactic you can do. It's very cheap to do. Uh, the unit may take a DS8 tactical support turret. I do love this model. I wonder what the rules are now. Uh, with either a missile pod or smart missile system. Let's just have a look here. Uh, a DS8 tactical support. It's 20 points, but it does include the war gear. There's nothing to add on top, so reasonable enough-ish, just about. I suppose the missile pod uses 24 points by itself, so. The options are to take a missile pod or a smart missile system. The smart missile system here is range 30. I think that's increased, I think that may be, used to be range 24. It's heavy 4, strength 5, but there's no minus on the AP, and you can fire it on units that you can't see. This is quite poor, I think the missile pod's better. Uh, bonding knife, if you're a six when taking a morale test for that unit, it passes automatically. Drone support. Uh, when a strike team is taken up, it's set up on the battlefield, any accompanying drones are set up unit coherency from that point onwards there separately. Uh, save your protocols as well. Guardian field. Guardian drones are five plus in one save. Strike teams are in three inches of any any friendly guardian drones have a six plus in fun so no bonus there and uh, it's need eight points to do it so might be worth it then tactical support turret tactical support turrets are not set up when the unit is set up instead once per game at the end of any of your movement phases you may set up a tactical support turret within coherency of its unit and more than two inches away from any enemy models. The target, the turret cannot move for any reason and is destroyed if the strike team moves out of unit coherency with it. So you gotta choose where you're gonna go. Once you set up, that turret has to stick there. If you move away, um, then it's destroyed. Okay, so it might be do if you've got a couple of units, you, you know, strike team, you Got them with pulse rifles, you're quite determined just to hold out. If you put them on a tide wall, perhaps, and you're determined just to hang on to that, not going to move away, then in the end of your movement phase, just put out your tactical support turrets. Got a bit of missile support there coming through. Could well be a pretty good option. Okay, next is the breacher teams. So I've just painted 20 of them. They're eight points each as well. Super cheap. Same stat line as the Fire Warrior. Can take the, uh, the well, just check it here. Can include up to five additional Fire Warriors. Fire Warrior Chassis can take place of one Fire Warrior. Right, so you can only go up to maximum of units of 10. Each Fire Warrior and Chassis is armed with a pulse blast and photon grenades. This unit may be accompanied by two tactical drones, or one tactical drone and an MV36 Guardian drone. I don't even really take the drones if you're taking a big, big unit, like unit of 10, then the drones become more worth it. Now, the Pulse Blaster, this is fascinating here. 
So you're looking at uh, similar stat line to how it was, same stat line as how it was, just the uh, results here, the AP is interesting. It's a close range, if you can get within five inches, remember you, you know, these are sort of bodyguards unit perhaps, um, where you deploy them outside of a transport, you've got your move, and then you potentially you have an assault move as well that you can do uh, to get closer, um, albeit there'll be a minus on your ballistic skill. Um, if you get within five inches, uh, when attacking with this weapon, you've six models that have got to get in to this range. Five inches is pretty close. It's assault two, so you still get your two shots, it's brilliant. Strength six, which you're going to be wounding most infantry on a three plus. And then it's AP minus two, fantastic. Really good. Medium range, range 10. Assault two, strength five, still good. Do get AP minus one, which is really cool. Then long range, 15 inches, which is actually quite far. Still get the two shots, strength four as well. So I think they're really good. So you could use that for, or teams of these for uh, protection, protecting like things like storm surges. Storm surge laying down long range firepower. Maybe the opponent's gonna try and ambush it, get a, a unit close by for combat or for shooting. Surround uh, the storm surge with breacher units that are able to counter fire at close range with some pretty deadly firepower. And only eight points each, so you could have a good uh, number of units of them. Pretty effective, so do like the breaches. Uh, so that's it, pulse pistols covered here, it's 12 inches, pistol one, strength five, uh, just the usual lines, for the, uh, usual stat line for the pulse weaponry. So you can take a marker light for these guys as well. Uh, the DS8 turrets available. All the usual here, except here for Guardian Field, the Guardian Drones have a 5 plus invun save. Breach teams within 3 inches, right, so they've got to keep within 3 inches of a friendly Guardian Drone, uh, have a 5 plus invun save. I know it's Breacher teams, not Breacher team models, it's Breacher teams. I think the units just got to be within 3 inches of a Guardian Drone, and then uh, they have a 5 plus invun. Okay, so that might be helpful enough. You know, Guardian Drones, not going to be too expensive, as we've seen, eight points. Breacher teams, you, know, you could have buy one Guardian Drone. I mean, I think it's worth it if you have a larger unit. If you max out the unit of 10, it's worth taking the protection. If you've paid out the points for them, then again, a unit of 10 is, what, 80 points? Very, very cheap. So, same impression I'm getting with 8th edition in Games Workshop of making the troops options for bulking out your army quite cheap, if not cheaper than they were in 7th. But you are paying out a fair bit though when you start moving into more elite unit types. So, good old Crute here. Now, do have a lot of them. Um, see if they're viable here. Crute. Uh, Crute carnivores. Six points each. I think two points more for a fire warrior. Yeah, so that's probably the option there, but Crute is movement seven. Weapon skill three plus, ballistic skill four plus, strength toughness three, one wound, one attack, leadership six, and a six up save. Uh, the Crute rifle should be free, it is. It's uh, range 24, rapid fire one, and then uh, strength four, AP nothing, one damage. And then you can use it in melee, it's plus one strength, that's it. Stealthy Hunters, at the start of the first battle round, but before the first turn begins, you can move this unit up to seven. You cannot end its move within nine inches of enemy models. If both players have units who can do this, the player who's taking the first turn moves their units first. So Crute still not quite so good. Only one attack. And now without the benefits for charging close combat weapons, you know, on the charge one attack. Even, they're even worse than they used to be, <laughs> sad to say. No, but crew aren't that great, which is a shame. But if you're looking for a cheap cannon fodder unit, then, you know, unit of 10 of them here is, you can take 10 for 60 points, you can take an additional 10, a big blob of 20 of them is 120 points. Uh, Crutox Riders. 34 points. Let's just check here. Crute gun is there. Alright, so that's just as they come. 
Uh, weapon skill 3+, plus, ballistic skill 4+, plus, strength 6, toughness 5, 3 wounds, 2 attacks, leadership 6 and 6 up, save. That unit can take, uh, you can take up to 3 of them. Okay, each rider fires a crude gun and the crude ox attacks with its fists. So the fists then is just the strength of the user, there's no bit AP minus, but it is damage too. Uh, you're only getting two attacks, so it's quite poor. And the crude gun is rapid fire one, range 48, strength seven, AP minus one, D3 damage. It's like a tamer version of the auto cannon. Agile brute, when this unit advances, add six to its move for the current phase, for that, for that movement phase instead of D6. Okay, still pretty poor. Crude hounds, are probably super cheap. Four points each. I think now you have to take them as a separate unit. Unit of four. Include up to four more or eight more of them. They have ripping fangs. They get two attacks, legit five, six up save, strength for toughness three. Weapon score is three plus. Movement twelve, they're quite quick. Um, strength for the user, but it is AP minus one. Voracious predators, you may reroll foul charge rolls for this unit when targeting a unit that has suffered has suffered any unsaved wounds. Okay. Still pretty pretty poor. And the crew shaper is an elite's choice. Uh, it's 31 points. Let's see if you have to pay for anything here. A ritual blade is zero. Okay. So movement seven, three plus weapon skill, four plus ballistic skill, strength for toughness three, five wounds, three attacks, leadership seven and six up save. Uh, covered the crew rifle. Can take the pulse rifle, pulse carbine. And then the Ritual Blade is... If any enemy models are destroyed by this weapon, friendly crew units within six of the bearer do not have to take morale tests to the end of the turn. Right, okay. So quite fluffy roll, but pretty pretty insignificant just there. It's quite hard to actually kill someone with that. You've, there's no minus on the AP, and you're only striking at strength free. So. Walk your options. I just covered that. Shape of commands. You may reroll wound rolls of one. Made for friendly crew units within six. The wisest of their kind, crew units within six of the shaper may use his leadership instead of their own. For morale tests. All right. So all in all, crew are cheap, but they're pretty poor. Uh, but they're cheap for mercenaries, really. So it sort of fits there. You want to go down that route. Okay. So. Next, we're on to stealth battle suits. Now, I painted some of these up freshly for my previous list. Uh, we'll have a look at them now. So, so stealth chassis here. It's movement eight, weapon skill five plus, ballistic skill four plus, strength for toughness four. Got two wounds now. Uh, two attacks, leadership seven, a free up save. The chassis very the leader gets an extra attack and an extra leadership going up to eight. Unit contains three of them, include an additional three. And a stealth chassis can take the place of the regular uh, stealth team member. Each uh, of them can be armed with a burst cannon, and you can take up to two tactical drones. Okay, so cost. This will be 25 stealth. They're 20 points each. Burst cannon, 10 points. I think they're roughly the same as they were. I think I'm sure they weren't. Um, 30 points each previously, because remember we're getting a unit of them for about 90 points. Okay. Mm. There's the fusion blaster. Okay, so any stealth, uh, right, so any stealth or, or chassis may take a single item from the support systems list. One chassis or chassis may replace their burst kind of fusion blaster. Still that restriction, just one of them can take the fusion blaster. Uh, if you've got six in the unit, two of them can do it. Uh, the chest ray can take a micro light and target lock. And then the unit may take a home and beacon. Just check the rules for home and beacon. Here. Here it is. It just comes off a bit later. Okay. So you get for the greater good. Bonding knife ritual. If you're a six from morale, you'll totally pass. Okay, so it's the worst possible result. Pass it, so it's quite helpful. 
infiltrators. Oh. Oh, right, okay, interesting. Because... Yeah. They all get it. That's interesting. Because bonding knife used to think, oh, I waste the time, I'm not going to pay the few extra points for it. And you just get bonding knife now. They all get it. Strike team. Breacher team. Commander. Dark Yeah, so, okay. Cool. So, bonding knife ritual. If you're, okay, so that's a little bit of a bonus there for the morale. Not too bad. Need to easily forget that. Need to remember that if you're all six, you pass automatically. Uh, infiltrators. During deployment, this unit can be set up anywhere on the battlefield that is not within your deployment zone, uh, your opponent's deployment zone, and is more than 12 inches away from enemy unit. So there is that option. Do move eight. So you could close the range pretty quick. Um, target lock. Unit with target lock does not suffer penalty to their hit rolls, moving and firing of heavy weapons, or for advancing and firing assault weapons. We've covered that. Camouflage fields. Your opponent must subtract one from all hit rolls for attacks that target this unit. That's it. That's their protection. You, you see it. See, with cover, you could have. Um, you could put them in four up. Cover saving a ruin. They get shrouded. Um, then they're on two plus cover save, but now it's just minus one to hit. Not that impressive for these. Remember, you're paying 30 points a time for them. And, you know, two thirds of them are armed with burst cannons, which aren't particularly amazing. See what the homing beacon does. A homing beacon can be used during your movement phase by placing it within an inch of its unit. If there are friendly homing beacons on the battlefield at the end of your movement phase, one of your units that's been set up in a manta hole can perform a low altitude drop instead of a manta strike. Set up the unit wholly within six of the homing beacon. The homing beacon then shorts out and is removed from the battlefield. Homing beacons are deactivated and removed from the battlefield if the enemy model ends a move within nine. Okay, so the advantage of the homing beacon is, let's just check the cost, I take it you have to pay for it, yeah it's 20 points, okay, so you've got a big unit of crisis battle suits, um, you've infiltrated in with the battle suits, here the stealth team, and then your first, your first turn comes up, home beacon, uh, you can only bring in one unit by the looks of it, so you've got a big unit of crisis battle suits, you want to get in nice and close to the opponent, then you can do that with this. So that's tactically pretty cool, you know, you've got your, your crisis battle suit, uh, your, your stealth team, you set up your home beacon, and then you can land on your move in six. That could potentially put you right in amongst the opponent if you want to get very, very close with weaponry. Just there. And maybe potentially charge or not. They might be able to do that. So home beacons, uh, one of the better uh, options there. Available for these. Okay, interesting. All right, next one is the Crisis Battle Suits. Just one of the classic tower units, one of my favorites. Um, so we'll see what they come up with now. They're uh, movement eight, weapon skill five plus, four plus ballistic skill, strength five, toughness five. Nice, their toughness has increased. They've got three wounds, their wounds have gone up. Two attacks, leadership seven, and three up saves. They've improved. Unit contains three of them. Can go up to an extra three or another six. And then uh, the you take the leader for free. Uh, stand loadouts, burst cannon, and uh, up to two tactical drones. Each crisis battle suit can take up to two drones. You, you could load out, if you take a unit of three of them, you could load out with a unit of six drones to help out. Which, uh, tactically, I'm thinking, say you take a unit of three crisis battle suits, and then you want to protect them in combat and with shooting. Each of them can take drones. And those drones could just hang around, absorbing all the hits. You land, do some damage, you get shot at, drones absorb damage, and you live to continue your shooting and harassing the opponent. So that could well be an option for them to play it that way. And it's, it's quite cheap to do that, it's eight points of time for the shield drones. 
We've covered the weaponry that these guys can take. Any crisis uh, battle suit may replace their burst cannon with up to three items from the ranged weapons and or support systems list. Right, so uh, you can take a load of weapons or mix them up with the support system. So pretty cool. Combinations, yeah, available. Again, comment section, we've talked about Commander. If you have a decent loadout combination, including weapons and the support systems, you can describe that in the comment section. That'd be interesting to hear about as well. Bonding knife available for them, for the greater good, and to strike. That's their deep strike ability. Pretty cool. And then for costing, then, crisis battle suits. is here the XV-8 they 42 points each ouch and you have to pay for your weapons on top so for example um, 42 points and if you gave them two fusion blasters you can add an extra 42 on top so 84 points <laughs> for one of them they are expensive they have gone up in a fair bit but the stat line's improved um, and then that deep strike ability makes them pretty nasty. So I still think they're viable. So you could go for XV8 bodyguards here. You'll, for that, you'll get an extra attack, and you'll get don't get any extra availability. It's still free items from the ranged or support systems. Do get swarm protectors. Roll d6 each time a friendly character loses a wound whilst within three inches of this unit. On a 2 plus, the model, a model from this unit can intercept the hit. The character doesn't lose a wound. This unit suffers a mortal wound. Okay, then the men to strike. Okay, so you, you could take them to see what the points difference is. 45, so three points difference if you want the extra attack and that swarm protectors for this. Alright, next one, ghost kill. I'm a massive fan of the Ghost Kill model, and then it, it was excellent in 7th edition. Hmm, I wonder how good it is now. So, uh, we're onto a chart here because it's got 10 wounds. Could be a bit of a disadvantage. You start losing wounds, your profile starts to drop down. But usually your movement's 12, so it's nice and quick. Ballistic skill, 4 plus and 3 attacks. If you have between 3 and 5 wounds range, you, you've lost half your wounds. Um, then you drop to movement 8 and 5 plus ballistic skill, 2 attacks and then 1 or 2 wins left is 4 inches, 5 plus ballistic skill and 1 attack. A little bit of a disadvantage that. Because yeah, like an 8 wound model or vehicle they just keep their full stat line. Which which is a bit, uh, quite an advantage. So the ghost skill, Chassere, it's uh, other than that it's weapon skill 5 plus, strength and toughness 6. 10 wounds, a lot of wounds, leadership 8 and a 3 up save. Then you've got the stealth drones just there, they're 4 up save. Strength for toughness 4. It's moving 12 so they can keep up. So the ghost skill battle suit consists of one chest free accompanied by two drones, stealth drones. He's armed with fusion collider and two flamers. Okay, so fusion collider. Let's just see how much he is first. He is around here somewhere. Here he is, the XV95. He's 82 points already. Then pay out for a fusion collider. Cost 44 points for that. And then for flamers, I believe it's nine points. I believe two flamers for nine points as well. So expensive enough. Then obviously you've got to pay out for your drones. The MV5 stealth drones, they're 10 points each as well. So, looking at a fair amount of points here. The M under 200, but still expensive enough. Um, so, we know about the flamers. The fusion collider, then it's range 18, heavy D3. So, you could roll one, just get one shot. Strength 8, AP minus 4, D6 damage. So it's, it's like a fusion blaster, but you could roll a dreaded one. Oh, oh a one or a two, which can give you one shot. If the targets are in half range, then you get to roll two dust, choose the best. Okay, so Fusion Collider is okay, but a bit unreliable. And even fours to hit as well. Makes things difficult. 
So, you may replace the fusion clod with a cyclic iron raker. Two uh, profiles to choose from. The first is the standard range 24 heavy 6. It's now you guaranteed 6 shots, that's better. Strength 7. It's only AP minus 1, it's only 1 point of damage. What could help there is that um, advanced targeting system where you drop your AP by 1. Um, so it would become AP minus 2. That would help him. Then you've got your overcharge option, that's D6, quite unreliable. But your strength goes up to 8. Your AP becomes minus 1 still, but it's D3 points of damage. If you make more than 1, if you make 1 or more hit rolls of 1, the bearer suffers a mortal wound. After all, this weapon's shots have been resolved. Okay. So the reroll 1's, the target lock ability might be quite helpful as well for him. So I'd say the Raker. Oh, I don't know. The Collider's nasty enough. Yeah, Fusion Collider's nasty enough. Depends what you're trying to target. Obviously, if you're going after vehicles, then the Collider's a better option because then you've got your Fusion Blaster back up as well, potentially. Then your minimum, if you take those two options, then your minimum's going to be three shots. If you roll well, up to five shots. Strength eight, AP minus four, D6 points of damage. Yep, yeah, it's the potential to pop a vehicle if you roll well enough. Uh, the Cyclic Iron Raker costs 39 points, a bit cheaper actually. Okay. Okay, yeah, so the I don't know really, it's, it's a difficult choice. I do like the Collider for damage, but Raker's not too bad. Okay. For combat, he's not a monstrous creature. Anyone just thinking he's not a monstrous creature? He's not going to have that. It used to be like a AP two damage coming through. It hasn't got that anymore. There's no minuses now. There's no melee bonuses for him at all. He's not as good in melee as he was. Let's see what bonuses he gets. Yeah, you can take two items from the support systems list. You could take that reroll ones, and the extra on your on your AP might be quite a good idea. So for the greater good, he gets he gets infiltrator during deployment. The unit may set up anywhere on the battlefield. It's more not within your deployment zone. Um, it's more than twelve inches away from enemy unit. Okay, ghost kill, warfare, electro warfare suit. Your opponent must subtract one from hit rolls for models attacking a ghost kill chasse ray from more than twelve inches away. So if you're over twelve, very similar to the previous edition. If you're over twelve inches away, it's minus one to hit. You got to save your protocols if there's drones nearby. Stealth field, model shooting at a stealth drone, or any ghost kill battle suit within three of a stealth drone, uh, subtract one from their hit rolls. So and it's cumulative, so overall you could be looking at minus two to hit. So guardsmen needing fours, and then suddenly they need sixes. Space marines need threes, need fives. So that does help, the minus two would help a fair bit. You know, predators trying to target him. Four shots, Predator Annihilator, four shots named freeze, becomes four shots named fives. That would help. Uh, drone support, when a. Uh, that's fine, just the usual rules for that. So, ghost kill's okay. Might be quite hard to kill. Yeah, maybe a good supporting unit for crisis battle suits coming down, or one to deploy ahead of the other units arriving. Yeah, so ghost kill's alright. The model's fantastic, but may well be tempted to take the Collider. Now, I've got other units that can deal with hordes. A Fusion Collider is quite nasty, and then the, you know, by itself it's quite unreliable, but the two Fusion Blasters in support means um, overall that unit's quite reliable. It's a minimum of three shots coming through, um, which would be pretty helpful. Okay, um, so that's the ghost kill. Next is the Riptide, another unit that's featured heavily in my tower army here. Um, so, immediately let's get the points cost here. 209 points, ouch, there's a lot of points up front here for this guy. There's only four more wounds than the ghost kill. So, 17 power points for him. Um, movement 12, a 
uh, ballistic skill 4 plus 4 attacks. If he loses half his wounds, he drops to movement 8, 5 plus ballistic skill 3 attacks. And then 1 to 3 wounds left, 4 inch move, 5 plus ballistic skill 2 attacks. Got the shielded missile drone here, be interesting to see those. Uh, so he is weapon skill 5 plus, strength 6, toughness 7, 14 wounds, leadership 8, and a 2 up save. The shielded missile drone is uh, weapon skill 5 plus, ballistic skill 5 plus, movement 12, strength and toughness 4, just the one wound, one attack, leadership 6, and a 4 up save. He's a single model armed with a heavy burst cannon and two smart missile systems. It may be accompanied by up to two shielded missile drones each equipped with a missile pod. Okay, so, the heavy burst cannon is 55 points you have to add on top. Remember, I used to pay about 180 points for this guy. Now you'd be paying with the heavy burst cannon about 160 so far, 260 so far. Smart missile systems, just have a look. It's 20 points a time. So now you have to pay 40 points for them. So now you have 300 points. Oh, it's very, very expensive. It really is expensive. Hmm, okay. Um, so the heavy burst cannon. Now attacking with this weapon, you choose one of the profiles below. You may only choose the Nova setting uh, in accordance with the Nova Reactor ability. Okay, so the standard shooting you get is range 36, heavy 8, strength 6, AP minus 1, and 1 point damage. So it's okay. Nova charge, if you go for the Nova Reactor, we'll cover that in a minute. Still keep the same range, but it's heavy 12. Uh, tough strength 6, AP minus 2. So the thing is here, right, say you've got 8 shots, you're going to hit with like 4 of them. Five of them. If you've got heavy 12, it sounds amazing. You're going to hit with six or seven. And then it's just going to be strength six, AP minus two. You're going to kill a couple of space marines on average for a 300 point unit. <sighs> oh dear. The, these kind of strength six, AP minus one kind of weaponry is just, just not going to cut it in eighth edition. You know, because you're wanting him to go after. You're not, you don't want him, uh, the Riptide to target Gaunts or Guardsmen with his weaponry. You want him to be bringing down Space Marines and Terminators and vehicles. He's not going to do that with Strength 6 AP-1. So don't think the Burst can. It's okay, but if you pay 50, over 50 points, you're going to need something better than that uh, for this thing here. So, um, missile pop, uh, Smart Missile System we've seen Pretty tame, you've got to pay 20 points a time. So very, very expensive. A ripped up chasse may replace both its smart missile systems with two plasma rifles or two fusion blasters. That's better. Now for the fusion blast, you're paying an extra point above uh, the smart missile system, so I think it's well worth it. Plasma rifles, they're okay, anti-marine, but there's not much damage being kicked out by them. A riptide chasse may replace its burst, heavy burst cannon with an ion accelerator. This is interesting. Oh no! A hundred and seven points! <gasps> so... You're now looking at about 300, with all the upgrades, about a 350 point unit. And you still haven't added any on, uh, added on any uh, support systems. Arm Accelerator. Again, two proof profiles. Uh, one's for the Nova Reactor. So standard is range 72, strengths. Range 72, heavy free. Oh dear, strength 7, AP minus 3, and 1 point of damage. Oh dear. And then overcharge is range 72, heavy D6. It's terrible because you could roll a 1. So you have a turn of shooting your big gun on your big 350 point battle suit and you get one shot, needing a 4 plus to hit. Oh no. And even then it's strength 8, it's AP minus 3, and it's only D3 points of damage. And if you roll a 1, one or more 1s to hit, the bearer suffers a mortal wound. Until all the shots have been resolved. Uh, that's overcharge, sorry, we've still got an overcharge to go. So overcharge is okay. 
it's okay, but it drops to quite unreliable. And overcharge then, heavy D6, so still extremely unreliable. Strength 9, AP minus 3, uh, 3 points damage, that is better. But again, you could roll dice to get one shot. And then needing force to hit. Um, okay. Riptide may take up to two items from support systems, you can add in two of those to help them out. Riptide shield generator still gets the 5 plus invun. It's quite helpful, there's 14 wounds to get through. Save your protocols do apply to him. The shielded missile drones have a 4 plus invun save. Now if you take the shielded missile drones, the 25 points a time, so now you're looking at 400 points. Model. Yeah. Uh, drone support rules, Nova Reactor. In your movement phase, you can choose to use Riptide's Nova Reactor. If you do so, he suffers a mortal wound, which just automatically takes a wound. Choose one of the following effects to last until the beginning of your next turn. So the Riptide gets a 3 plus invon. He can move 2d6 in your charge phase, even if he doesn't declare a charge, that's boost. Or Nova Charge, you get to Nova Charge your weapon. Okay. Sad to say, do not rate the Riptide anymore. He's very, very expensive. And the Iron Accelerator just doesn't. It's just not quite got that edge. The Heavy D6 is the big letdown. You could have a blistering round of six shots, but then you're going to miss with probably half of them. You know, you. In one round of shooting, you'd do well to half damage a vehicle of any kind. That's on Nova Charge. Right, I think it's not so good, I'm afraid to say. So, Riptide, don't rate him as much. The thing is, if you go for one of these, you take a Storm Surge spot, you, your army's just, that's half your army paid for, so it's really going to take a big chunk out. You can get a lot of stuff out for 300, 400 points. Okay, so uh, Pathfinders now for uh, fast attack. Uh, so movement seven, usual stat line for Tau. Five up save though for the recon armor. Uh, the Chasserie gets an extra attack. An extra leadership up to seven. Uh, the unit contains five Pathfinders. You can take up to five of them, more of them. So unit 10. Pathfinder Chasserie can take the place of a Pathfinder. Each Pathfinder. Uh, is armed with a Markerlite Pulse Carbon Photon Grenade. So Markerlite we know is three points. And the Pathfinder is five points. So five points plus three is eight points. So they've come down in, pr in price. They were 10. I believe, no, they were 11. So these have dropped significantly in points cost. And what's cool about these is Now, yeah, I mean, these are amazing points, value. I'm just thinking, you take, a, take a strike team, give them pulse carbines, you pay eight points. Take a pathfinder team, they get, uh, they get the uh, carbines and marker lights. And you, all you're trading it off for is just one less on your armor save. So I think they're uh, fantastic value. This unit may be accompanied by up to two tactical drones and or the MB3 recon drone under the burst cannon up to two support drones. The, M the MV31 pulse accelerator and or the MV33 crab inhibitor. Okay, so these ones get the nice plastic kit. So we'll check out these. The grav wave projector. Enemy units becoming any units beginning a charge move more than 12 inches. Enemy units beginning a charge move within 12 inches of a grav inhibitor drone reduce their distance by D3. So a bit of protection there. Uh, it's eight points for that drone. If you're expecting trouble in close combat, that's probably not bombing. Your opponent's probably going to work in a way around that, get really close for the charge. Uh, or just blast the unit away with firepower. You know, they'll just play to that and it's quite, you know, that, that the benefit's seen. The opponent just works around it, so probably 
not worth that. And I'd, I'd usually would keep the Pathfinders well away, so that kind of thing wouldn't happen. Next is the Recon Suite here. Units making saves against attacks made by a Pathfinder team is within three inches of a friendly Recon drone. Do not gain any bonus for their saving throws for being in cover. So that's worth doing that. And that is 12 points for that one, the MB3. Pulse Accelerator, Tau Empire Infantry units within 3 inches. So units again, one model within, the rest of the unit can be further away. Uh, have th the range of their Pulse Pistols, Pulse Carbines and Pulse Rifles increased by 6. That is a, that's a fantastic upgrade. That's only 8 points. Now we're looking at taking some Pathfinders, mixing them in with your battle line to give you some marker light support, some carbine support, and then definitely take a pulse accelerator drone to increase all of those pulse rifles, pulse carbines by six inches. It's 18 inch becomes 24. 30 inch pulse rifles become 36. That is brilliant value, pulse accelerator. Just that one upgrade there makes Pathfinders well worth it. You know, um, yeah, no, the way that's worked out, in the previous edition maybe the unit benefited from it. Because of these bubbles of influence now, this has made that even more fantastic. That's really, really good. Okay. Uh, so, up to three Pathfinders may replace their marker light pulse carbon with an iron rifle or a rail rifle. Interesting. The iron rifle will cost seven points instead of three, so there's only an extra four points. And the rail rifle is 22 points, so a fair bit more. So the iron rifle then, uh, you choose a profile, range 30, rapid fire one. So you get close, the opponent gets closer, you can get up to two shots. Uh, strength seven, an AP minus one. You can go for overcharge, it's heavy D3. Strength eight, AP minus one. If you roll one or more hit rolls of one, the bearer suffers a mortal wound. After all, this weapon's shots have been resolved. Okay. Nasty weapon there. Very, very cheap. Now, the Rao Rifle is quite a nasty weapon. It's range 30, rapid fire 1, strength 6, it's AP minus 4. Very, very nasty indeed. It's D3 points of damage. For each wound of a six made for this weapon, the target suffers a mortal wound in addition to the normal damage. So, that is a nasty weapon. Yep, so pretty good. Not too bad at all. Pretty good for taking out monstrous creatures, terminators, that kind of thing, or light vehicles. You know, vehicle with toughness seven or better, you're going to wound on fives, so it's going to struggle, but uh, toughness six. It's four plus, toughness five, three plus, so not bad. Okay, so that might well be an option as well. Do start paying the points for that, though. Uh, it starts to become quite expensive when you add those in. Very, very cheap. You know, unit of five with that drone, or unit of eight of them with that drone. Very, very cheap uh, slot filled in there. Got yourself a nice lot of marker light support. You could stack up loads of marker light hits on a unit, really prioritize them, get loads of perks and bonuses. And the Pulse Accelerator really helping out units as well. Another option if you had a gun line that's quite spread, you could take two units of five, take a drone in each of those units, and then just intermingle or interspace those two small units. So now your opponent has to take out two units of Pathfinders. You know, you can't fire one unit and wipe them out. That spreads them out a little bit, and you get two drones um, as an anchor point for your other uh, tower units to be nearby with their Pulse weapons. So, yeah, Pathfinder's are pretty cool and a uh, bargain as well. Okay, next is Piranhas. I do have a squadron of these. They're 45 points a time. Okay, um, they're movement 16, they're very, very quick. Weapon skill 6 plus, ballistic skill 4 plus, strength 4, toughness 5, 6 wounds, 2 attacks, leadership 6, and a 4 plus save. It's not bad for durability. This unit contains uh, one piranha accompanied by two gun drones. So I take it you have to pay for the drones. Now you're at 45, 55, 60 odd points. 
included up to four of them, each of which is accompanied by the gun drones. Each is equipped with a burst cannon. Pen number 10 there. And each, uh, yeah, there's two pulse carbines, okay. Um, okay. Yeah, just a correction here. The gun drones are equipped with two pulse carbines. So you are getting the four shots. So you can lay down a, 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 a stubble, I was thinking you were getting. You are at fives to hit. If you take a, a drone controller, uh, if you're uh, one of the uh, battlesuit teams, uh, then that's an option. But yes, yeah, so a fair amount of shots can come from them. Okay, so abilities explodes as if you're down to zero. Uh, save your protocols. Drones won't apply to this vehicle. Threat identification identification protocols. In the shooting phase, gun drones can only target the nearest. Okay, so that's quite strict for them. Attached drones. When a piranha is set up, its accompanying gun drones are attached and are treated as being embarked. Whilst the gun drones remain attached, the piranha is considered to be equipped with the gun drone's weapons in addition to its own. Okay. So that is eight shots then. Plus your uh, burst cannon. Yep, yeah, so 12 shots. Both drones can detach at the start of any of your movement phases by disembarking. From that point onwards, the drones are treated as a separate unit. They cannot reattach during the battle. I don't see much point for these, really. Um, is there an option here? Any may replace, any Piranha may replace their burst cannon with a fusion blaster and can take up to two Seeker missiles. Seeker missiles are five points each. Range 72, heavy one. A unit hit by this weapon suffers a mortal wound. Each Seeker missile can only be used once per battle. This weapon only hits on a six, regardless of the firing ballistic skill rate. You need the marker light help to hit with that at a better rate. Seeker missile is pretty terrible. A mortal wound. <sighs> nope. So there's some weapons are not very good. Seeker missile could potentially take out a vehicle in 7th edition, but not anymore. Could barely knock off a wind. So they're not very good. And leave us the, uh, the, some, the iron accelerator, they're not quite as good as well. So Tau have been knocked here with some of their weaponry. And that's painful for them because they, they need that weaponry to uh, do well in games. So yeah, not really into the piranhas, I don't think. Devilfish, so this is your transport vehicle. I wonder if it's got really expensive. It's the TY7. TY7. So it's up here. Uh, it's 101 points. <laughs> no. 101 points. It's probably a decent transport though, I'd imagine. Okay, so you're looking at. Uh, weapon skill 6 plus, usually a 4 plus for ballistic skill on the full strength, won't cover the whole damage chart. Uh, strength 6, toughness 7, 12 wounds, leadership 8, 3 up save. So pretty good stat line. Pretty standard for a, a, a decent enough vehicle. Um, he's armed with a single burst cannon, which I suppose you have to pay for that, it's 10 points. And the drones you've got to pay for as well with their pulse carbines. Nothing really to cover here. Instead of being accompanied by two drones, you can take two smart missile systems and you may take up to two seeker missiles. So hover tank distance must be measured to and from the hull rather than its base. Uh, explodes, turret mounting, units attacked by a devilfish with an MB3 beacon drone embarked within it do not gain any bonus to their saving throws for being in cover. Okay. Uh, uh, not beacon. Beacon, uh, a recon drone, okay. Uh, oh, where does it say? Oh, okay. It can transport only a single MB3 uh, recon drone, but does not count towards the total number of models. All right, so if they're, yeah, so if they're uh, transporting uh, Pathfinders. 
threat identification, that's for the drones, save your protocols for the drones, uh, and then attach drones rules just there. So if you want to transport, you can carry up to 12. But I think it rules that out. I mean, I could, I think it's just expensive. It's the gun line option I'm going for. It depends how you play your tower. People have different styles. Uh, people do like to mechanize them up. Uh, especially if you have a larger squad, you know, a squad of 10 breaches, uh, then, yeah, you know, you want to protect them, stick them inside a Delfish, and it will offer pretty decent protection. Can't take any vehicle upgrades here, doesn't look like. None of the trickery that you used to be able to in 7, so it's all, all on here. Next onto the flyers. I haven't, I haven't got one of these. Um, we'll see if any of these are any good. First is the AX3. Razor Shark Strike Fighter. Yeah, let's see. Uh, Razor Shark Strike Fighter. It's 82 points to start off with. Obviously, got to add some bits on top. Uh, you do get Strength and Toughness 6, 12 wounds, 4 up save. Sort of quite standard, really, for flyers. Um, it's equipped with a burst cannon. It's got to be 10 points. That's 92 points. A quad iron turret. This may be costly. 45 points, okay, so about 135 points so far. And two sick missiles, but 145 points. Okay, so not ridiculously expensive. Let's have a look at the options here. Missile pod, we know what that can do. The quad iron turret. Attacking with this weapon, choose one of the profiles below. Add one to hit rolls for this weapon against targets that can fly. Standard is heavy four, range 30, strength seven, AP minus one, one point of damage. If you go for overcharge, you've got the penalty here for your, any of the final to hit rolls of ones. You take a mortal wound, it's not that bad, 12 wounds. Uh, but overcharge range 30, heavy D6. There's the unreliability again. You know, safer option. If they wanted to keep the same output, you know, heavy 2D3 is more sensible. Then you're gonna get it between two and six. I just think that's better, but D6 is quite ran very, very random. Uh, strength 8, still only AP minus 1, that's quite poor. And then D3 points of damage. So I don't think that's particularly amazing. Not really. Okay, your airborne. Uh, so that protects them a bit. Um, can only be charged by units that can fly, including jet bikes and stuff now. Uh, and even things like crashes battle suits, they fly. And skimmers can fly. You can only attack or be attacked in the fight phase by units that can fly. You've got supersonic, which is your movement there. You've got your 90 degree turns and so on. But it's not so bad now because you can fire at any angle you want. Hard to hit, there is that minus one. Crash and burn. Okay, so that's the, it just doesn't really. It's okay, but uh, again, 7th edition, you could fly over a target, you could fly your quad iron turret into the rear armour of a vehicle and detonate it. Now, that's not really going to happen. AX-39, the Sun Shark Bomber. Seems to be in 8th uh, in, in edition, uh, small arms fire seems to remain pretty much the same. Bolters, pulse rifles. Medium weapons have suffered because their AP is not very good. Usually it's minus one, maybe minus two, and uh, they just they just don't quite have the destructive capability against infantry and against vehicles. They're just really going to struggle. But the heavy heavy weaponry uh, is still okay. So las cannons, melters, um, that kind of stuff still does well. That's more the area I think you need to equip yourself in. It's me the medium kind of weaponry, quad iron turrets, and so on. Just gonna, I think you're gonna be frustrated if it's not gonna do too well. So the key for the tower is that the heavy hitting weaponry, not blanket, the sort of philosophy is use your infantry and cheap stuff to kill their infantry and cheap stuff. And then for weaponry, for taking out vehicles and monstrous creatures, go for the fusion blaster, uh, rail gun, rail rifle kind of options, I think is better. Uh, so the AX-39 Sunshark Bomber is 100 points, same stat line. Do you get the interceptor drone here, which is movement 20. Uh, five up for weapon skill, ballistic skill. Strength three, toughness four, is a four plus save. It's armed with a marker light, three points. The missile pod, which is gonna be 24. 
two seeker missiles, about 140 odd points here, and it's accompanied by two MV-17 interceptor drones, each equipped with an ion rifle. Uh, 15 points each. So this one's more expensive, 180 odd, 70, 170, 180 odd points. Now, comes with a missile pod. You can take a second missile pod. So now you've got four shots. If you want a real bit of heavy firepower coming from there, that's quite cool. Iron rifles we've covered already. Don't really, I mean, it wasn't that great in seventh. It doesn't seem to be that amazing here. Not really in 8th edition either. All the usual rules, pulse bombs. A sunshot bomb may drop one pulse bomb as it flies over enemy units in its movement phase. To do so, after the model has moved, target an enemy unit that it flew over. Roll d d6 for each model in that unit, up to a maximum of 10. Adding one to the result if the enemy unit is infantry. On five or more, the target suffers a mortal wound. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's fine. The pulse bomb's great. No problem at all with that. That's good. Uh, crash and burn attached drones. Absolutely pretty cool. There it is. Okay. So this one you could equip pretty good. Yep. The drones are attached. Yeah, my read this is specific here. When a sun shark bomber is set up, its accompanying interceptor drones are attached and are treated as being embarked. Whilst the interceptor drones remain attached, the Sun Shark Bomber is considered to be equipped with the drone's weapons in addition to its own. So I believe that it uses its own weapon skill to fire them. Because it's considered that the weapons are part of the Sun Shark Bomber. So you can't have a fair amount of firepower this thing. However, hit roll of ones with the iron rifles and the overcharge settings uh, in one of the drones Settings results in one of the drones being slain rather than the Sun Shark Bomb. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, because that could have been a real glitch in the rules there. Uh, both drones can detach at the start of any of your movement phases. They become separate. And they're pretty quick, 20 inch move. Okay. So potentially, you get a fair amount of shots out of this unit, and the bomb's pretty cool. So the Sun Shark Bomb is pretty good. Next is tactical drones. And there's a little bit of a gripe with these. Yeah, we'll just check it out. So we, we've covered these already. Um, drone support. Drones often accompany. Yeah, the only thing I was going to say about these is you can't uh, deep strike with them, which is a shame. I'd love to be able to take a unit like a cluster of shield drones, for example, and you, you bring down your crisis team, and then you land your drones nearby, and they just absorb the hits coming through. But I can't see that you can do that here, which is a shame. They've just got to be deployed with your army, which is not quite so good. Maybe you can have them deployed, a cluster of them, right in the heart of your force units nearby. Any units that get hit, shot at in trouble, just send in the savior protocols with your drones, using them to protect your army. So I think that's a pretty good option. Using shield drones to protect your army, I think it's a brilliant idea. Okay, so that's that. Best bit sting wings, never really been that amazing. We're now looking at Fifteen points each. Just going to see about the neutron blaster. Is zero. So it's included in the cost. They're movement fourteen. They're very quick. Weapon skill, ballistic skill four plus. Strength three, toughness four. One wound, one attack. Five up uh, leadership. Four up save now. Not bad. Four sting wings. You include up to four more. We're up to eight more of them. Um. They're each armed with a neutron blaster, which is zero points to add on. Um, range 18, assault 2, strength 5, AP minus 2. Not bad. Sting wings are okay. Plunge from the sky during deployment. All right, so you've got the deep strike ability of them, which makes them pretty nasty, actually, as an ambush unit. Yep. And they have the flyability to pull out of combat and so on, so Vespids are not too bad. An option. I still, still don't think I'd take them, but they seem okay. Okay, so this is the sniper teams here. So the fire sight marksmen. 
is 21 points. You have to pay for your marker light, which is three more points, 24 points in total. Uh, his ballistic skill is three plus actually, brilliant. Movement five, he's got three wounds, actually. And two attacks and a four up save. So a little bit of durability of him because he could be targeting, uh, but look, uh, safety protocols, yeah, so drones can protect him. Uh, drone uplink, you can add one to hit rolls for the sniper drones when they attack a unit visible to a friendly fire sight marksman. Okay, this model adds two rather than one to its save and throws when benefiting from cover. That's his marksman stealth field. Okay, so that's his marker light, okay, just there. So the sniper drones then, MV71, sniper drone, it's 18 points of time, movement 8, weapon skill, ballistic skill 5+, plus. strength and toughness 4, 1 win, 1 attack, leadership 6 and a 4 up save. Unit contains, so you just pay for him, that's it, it's 1. Then, well he could then run multiple units of sniper drones, because it's unit visible to a friendly fire site marksman. So it works out differently now. You don't have to take one of them and three of those. You take multiple uh, sniper drone units and then you just have one of these guys just hidden somewhere, anywhere. So he, he could be at the other end of the battlefield and these could be somewhere else. That's cool. They don't have to cluster around each other anymore. That's great now, that's a really good idea. Great fun. Um, right, so the long shot pulse, let's just check here, it contains three of them, include up to, you can have more of them, up to six. And the long shot pulse rifle. Range 48, rapid fire one, strength five. Uh, you can target a character, but there's no minus on the AP, which is a shame. Okay. You've got save your protocols, sniper drone stealth field, your opponent must attract one to hit rolls this units for units attacking sniper drones, unless the sniper drones are the closest enemy unit. Alright. So lovely models, great idea. Don't pack much of a punch at all. Which is a shame. Okay. Next one's the Skyray gunship. Uh, usual stat line I think is toughness seven though. It does have 13 wounds, so pretty durable. It is, has two marker lights, so it's going to be six points, and six seeker missiles, which is 30 points. Uh, you've got a, the drones as well, so another 16 points to add on top of that. And the cost is 119 points. You're looking at about 160 odd points here. Bit more maybe uh, for the sky ray. The seeker missiles are terrible. They are terrible. I mean, one mortal wound suffers a mortal wound. You're gonna take out a marine. I don't know. So no good for taking out vehicles anymore. You know, and you need you need. Uh, Mark, Mark likes to guide them in, and it's only at his ballistic skill, which is 4+, plus, 3+, plus, sorry, for him. But still, don't really rate that, it's a shame. Uh, let's just see. There's no bonuses here for flyers or anything, really, no. So the sky rate, I don't think so, I don't really rate that at all. There, okay. So, hammerhead gunships and then uh, long strike. I'll maybe cover hammerheads first and then come back uh, to long strike. This is interesting. I have hammerheads. I used to use them. Are they viable again? Now is the question. So, remember, you're looking for a tank now that's meant to be the best for anti tank. Decent armour, uh, excellent gun is what we're looking for. So, it's the TX7. 117 points before you add anything on top. Bad feeling about this, <laughs> it's going to be expensive. Um, okay, so here's 13 wounds. It's uh, just pointing out some stuff here. He has ballistic skill 3 plus, good. 
It's a good start. The railgun is 38 points. Okay, so give 150 odd points here. It's over actually, 155 odd points. Uh, the gun drones, 55, 65, 170 odd points. Just there, okay. So is this gun any good is the big question. All right, so iron cannon, you can take. You may replace the railgun with an iron cannon. Let's just have a look how much that costs. 55 points, okay. So standard is range 60, heavy three, strength seven, AP minus two and two points of damage. It's all right. It's all that compromise between, it's not really great against vehicles, it's okay. And then it's not as enough shots to take on hordes. It's kind of maybe good against space marines, but really would you want him to be using such a heavy tank to take on that kind of target? Overcharge, you can go for D3, so you could, you could lose out on shots. You could just get one shot here. And it's strength eight, AP, still only AP minus two, three points of damage. Change the type to heavy D, to heavy D6 against units containing 10 or more models. So there's that bonus, but again, you could roll at one. And you can take mortal wounds if any of your hit rolls after everything's been resolved at ones. So here it is then, the Rao gun. Range 72, it's the same. Heavy one, it is a one shot weapon. Strength 10, AP minus four, and D6 points of damage. Each time you make a wound roll of six for this weapon, the target unit suffers D3 mortal wounds in addition to the normal damage. So it's a bit of fun added on there and a bit more punch uh, to the railgun solid shot. Yeah, it's still a decent enough weapon. Still trying to get that hit, but you're on three plus. A little bit of marker lights, you can reroll ones. So it becomes pretty reliable. Not bad. Sub munitions, heavy D6, strength 6, AP minus 1, and 1 point of damage. Okay, a bit of anti infantry there if you need it, so a bit quite versatile. You know, you know you're going to be quite durable here, really. It's going to take a fair bit to bring one of these vehicles down. You've got hover tank explode, save your protocols, threat identification, and then attached trench, all the usual. All right, so there's a standard hammerhead gunship, it's not, it's not bad. Not bad. Okay, next one is Long Strike. 137 points. So you're paying an extra 20 points here for him. And uh, we'll see how much better he is. Same stat line, but to hit, he is 2 plus. Maybe worth that. Just get that reliability. Uh, long Strike. It's same armament here. Yeah, so we'll go straight on to his abilities. Yep. Tank Ace. You can add one to wound rolls for long strikes gunship when he shoots at a vehicle or a monster. Now that is good. That's worth the that's worth paying 20 points for. Oh yes, he is excellent. He is he is excellent. You're paying 20 extra points. For that, you're getting him firing at ballistic skill 2 plus. That's good. Then you're adding one to your wound rolls. So you're usually going to be wounding on a 3 plus. You know, if you're striking at strength 10. Now you add one to your wound rolls, you're going to be wounding on 2 plus. Brilliant. Um, then uh, here, Firecast Exemplar. You can add one to hit rolls in the shooting phase for other friendly tower uh, hammerhead gunships within six. So if he takes a body, his body's going to be on three plus to hit, two plus to hit as well. That is absolutely fantastic. So long strike's great. Oh, you may see the return of the hammerheads. You may well see the return of the hammerheads. I don't know, it's a storm surge is easy, it takes up a lot of points. But a couple of. Um, Hammerhead gunships, and they're so iconic, they're so classic Tau. Uh, but I'm glad to see the Hammerheads have, have improved. I reckon they've improved a fair bit. But long strike combination, absolutely fantastic. So I used to run that, I used to run long strike and then 
hammerhead number two uh, coming in as support. If you have them hanging around with each other, firing at twos to hit, and him usually wound on a two plus. Nasty weapon. Bypassing armor, causing trouble. No, fantastic. Really, really good. So I'll rate the hammerheads, they're good. Okay, so. Broadsides. Broadside battle suits. Let's have a look here. Start at 80 points. They're quite expensive. Yeah, you're almost compar comparing them now, a single one of them, co comparable to a hammerhead gunship. A bit less expensive, but put, but getting close. Um, so, stat line here, movement 5, weapon skill 5+, plus, ballistic skill 4+, plus, strength and toughness 5, 6 wounds, attacks 2, leadership 7, 2 up save. 2 up saves um, in 7th edition were great. Um, you just, it was usually always a 2 up, unless you had a quite rare we weaponry that's AP1, AP2. Now, you know, AP minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 weaponry coming through is going to knock a 2 up save down. So that 2 up isn't as safe as it used to be. Um, 6 wounds to absorb though. That's the chasseur. If you take the upgrade, just get an extra attack and extra leadership. Unit contains one of them. You can take two more of them together. Uh, each broadside is equipped with a heavy rail rifle and two smart missile systems. The unit may be accompanied by up to two MV8 missile drones, each equipped with a missile pod. There are up to two tactical drones as well. Hmm. So, 80 points. Heavy rail rifle. Let's just have a look here. 63 points. Ouch. Yeah, rail gun cheaper. <laughs> On the hammerhead. Um, so now you're looking at 143 odd points. It comes armed with uh, two smart missile systems. Just kind of cost you 40 points. Uh, ouch. You can swap them out for two plasma rifles if you want to save points. Only 11 points are going to save a fair bit. So add, add an extra 22 points on top of that. So you are looking at the cost of a hammerhead. Virtually. Yep. If you take the drones, you would be. Yep. Yeah. MV8 missile drones. Let's just have a look here. They're 20 points a time. Oh dear. So just one of those things armed with, with the two missile pod drones and those weapon upgrades is the same as a hammerhead. And if I had to choose between the two, the way things are, you may be tempted to go with the hammerheads. For maneuverability. Hmm, okay. Yeah, just a bit more reliable to hit. It's fours to hit with these. Hammerhead with long, with long strike helping out. Twos to hit. Big difference, right. But the heavier arrow rifle, it's range 60, nice range. Heavy twos, you do get two shots. Strength eight, AP minus four, and D6 points of damage. It is a decent weapon. And here, again, if you're all six with your wound, Unit suffers a mortal wound in addition to the normal damage. All right, so there's that little bonus there as well. The heavier air rifle is decent. Yeah, no, it is good. Any broadside may replace the heavier air rifle with two high yield missile pods. So a high yield missile pod is 41 points. But you're replacing your two of them, so you actually have to double that. You're looking at 160 odd points. Just there. Then the <laughs> you have to have 40 points for your uh, smart missile system, so that's, now you're looking at a 200 point model. <laughs> it is, it's a 200 point model. Unbelievable. That's over double the, what it used to cost. Because I used to pay about 90 points for them, I believe, so. Very, very expensive indeed. Very, very expensive. But for that, you're getting the high yield missile pods, range 36, is heavy 4, strength 7, AP minus 1, D3 points damage. It's not bad, and you're doubling that, you've got two of them, so this is 8 shots. Um, so if you give that, it's only AP minus 1, but if you give them that uh, advanced targeting system, you can turn it into AP minus 2, 
makes it a bit more deadly. And D3 points damage, it's pretty good, you can rack up the damage, pretty cool. Then the smart missile system, heavy force, another 8 shots, so you can have a 16 shot model here. Yep. Okay, if you're rerolling ones, your AP isn't being improved by one, then pretty nasty. Not, not too bad. Okay, but it is expensive. It's got a bonding knife ritual. Oh, here uh, you can replace the smart missile systems with plasma rifles. Any broadside chassis or chassis may take a secret missile. Any broadside chassis or chassis may take one item from the support systems list. Okay. That's only one item from the support systems, not two. You've got drone support, safety protocols, bonding knife. Okay. So no, they're okay. Broadsides aren't bad, but they are very, very expensive. So next one is the KV-128 Storm Surge. Okay, this is going to be interesting. One of the anchor points here for my previous tower list. Probably most, more than likely going to include him in the new army. Uh, we'll see how good he is. It's 22 power points. The Storm Surge costs 180 points, and then you've got to add your weapons on top. Movement of six. So he has slowed right down. He's slow. Weapon skill five plus, and then we go across here. He starts on a four plus ballistic skill. Strength is 8. Toughness 7. Not the toughest available. He's dropped, I think. He used to be toughness 8. No, I could be wrong. No, no, I think he was toughness 6. He's got up to toughness 7. Uh, three attacks on his full strength. Leadership 8 and a 3 plus save. Uh, 20 wounds as well. A fair amount of wounds. Uh, but but we've, as we've seen in some battle reports, if there's last cannons around, those 20 wounds can disappear pretty quick. Uh, Storm Surge is a single model equipped with a cluster rocket system. Will cost 61 points. We've got 240 odd points so far. Four destroyer missiles. 10 points each. So 280 odd points. Two flamers, that's about 300 points. Uh, and then the pulse of blast again. 43 points, so about 350 odd point unit. If you take the uh, Pulse Driver Cannon, it's 97 points, so pushing on for a 400 point unit here. I think those wounds could pretty rapidly disappear. Be worth taking the shield upgrade for him. Uh, it is 20 or 40 odd points, cool, he is expensive, but it's quite a gun platform here. Um, okay, so we know about the air, air bursting fragmentation projector, burst cannon, cluster rocket system, range 48, heavy 4d6, loads and loads of shots, strength 5, no AP minus, uh, but it is damage 1. It's a bit of infantry clearance of him. If, uh, yeah, free items from the support systems. So I would definitely give him the advanced targeting system for 8 points. All his weapons an extra minus 1 on the AP. It's a brilliant upgrade to take. Absolute bargain, especially for the Storm Surge. Uh, that would make all those cluster rocket systems minus 1. That helps. Space Marines in cover, getting a 2 up save. They keep. They go back to their 3 up save with the minus 1. The destroy missile is range 60. It's heavy 1. A unit hit by this weapon suffers D3 mortal wounds each destroyer missile can only be used once per battle. He only hits on a six, regardless of the ballistic skill. So, yeah, you need the um, marker light help there. D3 mortal wounds, so a destroyer missile isn't really a destroyer missile. Oh dear, D3 mortal wounds, you could do all that effort and just cause a wound. Mortal wounds, the ability to cause mortal wounds is good. Just going to go back to marker lights. Destroyer and seeker missiles fired at this unit use the firing model's ballistic skill. Right. Rather than hitting on a six. Right, so 
okay so this is this is better okay so for example I was thinking maybe you, could, you might only be allowed to fight a dis destroy missile or two of them a turn you could let loose with all four of them at a mark a lighted target needing your ballistic skill to hit and you could hit you could then cause multiple uh, mortal wound uh, d3 amounts coming through so that's the potential where it could cause trouble yep okay to actually destroy a vehicle with them you're not going to do it unless you get four out of four hits and then uh, roll four dice all getting fives and sixes so i think it's going to happen yep okay so destroy missiles okay flamer we know about All right so the pulse blast can that's the shorter range staggered uh, profile one so when attack with this weapon you choose one of the profiles below close range is range 10 it's heavy 2 strength 14 AP minus 4 and 6 points of damage that's utterly horrendous medium range is range 20 which is heavy 4 strength 12 AP minus 2 and 3 points of damage and then long range is uh, range 30 heavy 6 strength 10 there's no AP minus though and it is only 1 point of damage which is kind of weird Okay, so the blast scan is okay, but I, I don't usually go for that because I think it's quite restrictive with your ranges. I like the pulse driver can just for the ability to hit a longer range. Um, it is more expensive, you're paying almost 100 points for it, but you're getting. Hmm. You're getting range 72, but it's heavy D3, so you use a fair chance you're only getting one shot. Strength 10, it's AP minus 3 and D6 points of damage. If you attack a unit of 10 or more models, you get heavy D6, but again, not very reliable. So, the Storm Surge, Pulse Driver Cannon is okay. There's a lot of points there for a weapon that could struggle. So I think the Storm Surge is okay. I don't think he's going to win you the battle by himself. He's going to need other support. He's sort of an all-rounder for shooting wires, uh, but I think he's going to attract attention. I think you'd need to take that shield to protect him, of give him a four plus in one save for sure, as he might not last too long. You know, you know, you've got last cannons all over the table firing, and you're going to half the effectiveness of those last cannons with that four plus in one save. I think that's well worth doing. But I'd also take the, the extra for the mate, for the uh, AP minus there, and the, the, maybe the reroll ones option as well. That uh, would be a good idea. Explodes. He does explode. Stabilizing anchors. Storm Surge may deploy its anchors at the end of your shooting phase while its anchors are deployed. At the end of your shooting phase, right, so it's um, the following turn. While its anchors are deployed, it may not move for any reason and it cannot pile in and attack in the fight phase. But you can have one to hit rolls, right? So it becomes three plus to hit. Storm Surge can retract the anchors at the beginning of any of your movement phases and can then move, shoot, and fight normally. Okay, so definitely a gun line unit there to sit still. Freeze to hit is better. Okay. A walking battleship. This model can fall back in the movement phase and still shoot and or charge that turn. That's handy. It does not suffer the penalty for moving and firing heavy weapons. Excellent. This model can only benefit from cover when making saves. Cover when making saves if at least half of it is obscured from the fire. Okay. So there he is, Storm Surge is okay. Um, we'd worry about the driver cannon, but uh, I think over the course of a battle after multiple turns, um, you're gonna get some good rounds coming through. You know, so it's the, the key is to keep the opponent away from him, keep him alive and just let them fire every turn. And then that's when uh, they seem to dominate the table. I've seen it in a number of battle reports uh, where the Storm Surge lasts towards the end of the game and that big gun platform is still there firing away and that usually causes trouble uh, for the opposing army. Okay, so yeah, I haven't quite finished yet. We've got the uh, Tide Ball and this is an option I'm nicely tempted uh, to get a hold of some of these. So the Tideball drone port here, first of all, is 70 points. It's movement six. So it's treated like a vehicle now, 
which is interesting. It's toughness 7, 10 wounds, and a 4 up save. A type of drone port is a single model. It is fitted with up to 4 tactical drones. Okay. Fortification. A tie ball drone port cannot move independently, nor can it fight in the fight phase. Enemy models automatically hit this model in the close in, in the fight phase and do not make to hit rolls. However, friendly units can still target enemy units that are within an inch of this model. Mobile defense platform. If a friendly Tau Empire infantry unit embark is embarked on a tie ball drone port at the beginning of your movement phase, you may move it in the movement phase. A tie ball drone port cannot advance. Or charge. Okay, so you need, you need a unit inside to man it. Open topped. Models embarked on this unit can attack in the shooting phase. Measure the range and draw a line of sight from any point on the, on this model. Interesting. So you've got your guys on board here and you can, you can fire this squad f here from this point for example and all the weapons count. You don't measure your range counts as embarked on a vehicle. Adds a nice bit of flexibility to your shooting. That is really, really good. Okay. Measure the range or line of sight. When they do so, any restrictions or modifiers that apply to this model also apply to the passengers. For example, if the passengers cannot shoot if this model has fallen back in the same turn, the passengers cannot shoot uh, except with pistols if this model is within one inch. Okay, so you've got to be careful with that. Okay. Drone control systems. When you set up a tie wall drone port, you can also set up a unit of up to four tactical drones in the slots in the drone port. Okay, these drones begin the battle fully automated. They automatically shoot in each of your shooting phases. If there is a friendly Italian pilot unit embarked on the drone port at the beginning of the movement phase, you can take control of the drones, which then detach from the drone port and act as a separate unit that's part of your army. In addition, while a friendly Tau Empire infantry unit is embarked on the drone port, the tactical drone is activated in this way, you can use that unit's ballistic skill instead of their own when making shooting attacks. If the drone port is destroyed bef before the drones are activated, they're destroyed as well. In the, in the old uh, rules, you got the drones for free pretty much. I thought it was a brilliant bargain. I don't think so. No, you've got to pay for the drones now. It works out quite expensive. Uh, you've got to explode result just there. Uh, this model can transport any number of Tau Empire infantry characters and one other Empire infantry unit, but no more than 10 models in total. Okay. So you've got to pay for your drones. If, if you're not after drones, then don't bother with that. Uh, the Tybal shield line. Okay, Tybal shield line is a single model. It can also include a Tybal defense platform. Oh, which you have to pay for as well. So a Tybal shield line. Is 70 points. And then the defense platform is another 70 points on top of that. Oh dear, right, so you're paying out a fair bit there. So 70 points each. So, so this bit here. 70 points and this bit here is 70 points as well. Paying for a it's more expensive because you're paying for a vehicle really. So this could be, I mean it is a cheaper option but slightly than um, the Devilfish in a way. That's what you want to go for. Okay. Yeah, alright. So fortification, tie ball shield lines, tie ball defense platforms cannot move. That's the rules for that. Right, tie ball network. When a tie ball shield line includes a tie ball defense platform is set up on the battlefield, both models are placed within an inch of each other. From that point onwards, both are treated as separate units. You can split away from each other. Mobile defense platform. Covered that. Open top to cover that. Tie ball field. A tie ball shield line can reflect shots back at the enemy. For each save roll of a 6 plus you make in the shooting phase for a tie ball shield line, the attacking unit suffers one mortal wound after they're finished shooting. So yeah, that's its own save of 4 plus. 10 wounds. Okay. Explodes just there. Yep. Okay. 
Type or shield line, type or defense platform. Can each transport any number of town by infantry characters. Uh, it's 10 models in total. Right, so the massive advantage of these now is that they count as vehicles, which means you cannot shoot at the infantry units inside until you've destroyed the vehicle. That is massive. It's massive for things like Pathfinder teams who are vulnerable, but now you stick them inside this, this open top vehicle, really. Your opponent's got to break his way through the vehicle in order to shoot at the infantry inside. That is a massive, massive advantage. So, you know, if you've got infantry units you want to protect, but still want them to be able to shoot, then that is the way to go. Yep. Yep, uh, that's really good. Yep, uh, that's really cool. Okay, so shield wall is, uh, is decent. The, the, the main benefit now is that this counts as an open top vehicle. Yep, uh, that's really good. Okay, uh, the gun rig here is the last entry. Type of gun rig is 70 points. Supremacy Railgun, I guess you have to pay for. You add an extra 69 points to that as well. So you end up paying a fair bit. Uh, this one, same stat line. Supremacy Railgun is heavy too. Oh, surrenders. Heavy too. Uh, strength 10, AP minus 4, D6 points damage. And you roll a 6, it is the D3 uh, mortal wounds on top of that as well. So very, very nasty indeed. Problem is you need 5s to hit. Let's just have a look here, fortification, open topped. Mobile defense platform, if a friendly tower empire infantry unit is embarked in a type or gun rig at the beginning of the movement phase, you may move it in the movement phase. A type or gun rig cannot advance or charge. Automated weapon, unless a friendly tower empire infantry unit is embarked on this model, its supremacy railgun can only target the nearest visible enemy. If two units are equally close, you may choose which is targeted. Okay, so you need the infantry to be able to fire at whatever target you want. Ah, oh, there's nothing you can do to improve the ballistic skill. Ah, tragic. But it's cheaper. It's cheap. To a degree, yeah, okay. So there it is, that's the gun rig option just there. They are quite expensive, these. Uh, but your infantry is very cheap. If you want to, look to protect some infantry, especially pathfinders, then... It's the way to go. It really is. Uh, okay. Question I have though: You got pathfinders. Uh, the marklight counts as heavy. If the platform moves, is it minus one to your shooting? I think it is. I could be wrong. If you know, then leave that in the comments section. But that is it for the tower. So units that's the, the the shield lines are pretty cool because they're vehicles storm zone is okay uh, I'm impressed with the hammerheads the infantry is really cheap and decent breaches are cool uh, the drone protection rules are really good the savior protocols are fantastic um, I still rate the sunshine bomb is pretty cool and then uh, the downers is the riptide, so to say. <laughs> Crisis battle suits are very much. Um, our crew, not really much good at all. So it just gives you an idea uh, of what I'm leaning towards here uh, with the review or with this Tau Army. But that's the review uh, for Tau in this Index Xenos 2 book. Uh, just to mention, I've got mine from gamingfigures.com, you can check them out discount Warhammer 40,000 and other uh, gaming systems as well. So leave your comments and feedback what you think about the town now, whether they are better or worse. They're saying that all the armies have been balanced out. Uh, I think towers still are pretty good, pretty good. I can't see much of a problem here. I think there's more of an emphasis now on certain units for sure. Um, the, ra the rail weaponry and the fusion weaponry I think is key for the tower. The ability to protect themselves as well, just with shield drones, I think it's going to help. And then not making the army small, but bulking it out with the cheap infantry and pathfinders. Breachers, strike teams, I think is wise as well. 
Um, so sort of giving you an idea of how I'm going to go with the new town. I'm still working on the list. You may see a bit of experimentation take place. Uh, if you want to follow the town more closely, check out the Plus channel. Uh, there will be a Tower Army development video, so you get to see the new list. You can uh, hear that army, or see that army being put together. You can in, then give your own input, help change the army before it actually reaches the battlefield, long, long uh, time before it actually reaches uh, the regular channel. Obviously you've got the exclusive battle reports and extra content there, or double the content really, there on the Plus channel, so you can check that out. But there it is, that's the review for Tau Empire uh, 8th edition uh, Index Xenos 2. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.